So what I'd like to do is to share with you some ideas about the application of nanoscience to medicine. Now, before starting on the science, let me just give you a few words of background. Probably all of you know that healthcare is facing its very own economic crisis. Cost is going up to 6% annually on average, uh, which means doubles over 12 years. Some sectors is doubling in cost over five years. And there's no hope from the uh, pharmaceutical industry. The cost is going up annually and the success rate is decreasing. So really, we need a new paradigm. The answer is to perhaps to look at molecules and the, uh, the molecular sources of, of disease. So here, man is a one meter in size, egg and sperm is a thousandth, DNA is one billionth, or one nanometer in size. So sex is microscopic, life is nanoscopic. The, the uh, executives in the room recognize that as a golf ball, no doubt, but in fact, it's only 50 nanometers in size, and it's one of these viruses, it's the hepatitis C virus. It's 100 times smaller than a red blood cell, but in fact, 100 times bigger than a water molecule. And this really is the ultimate frontier, and it's there that we really must look. Now, conventionally, we've done medicine by optical microscopy. We can look at cells, and we look at, can look at processes such as cell division, and it's when this goes out of control that cancer uh, onsets. So optical microscopy runs out of steam at around one micron. To go to the nanoscale, we really need a new technique, and there we measure atomic forces. We can measure individual atoms, and that allows us to look inside cells and look at individual strands of DNA, and indeed to look at the molecules, the molecular machines that drive the DNA in the process of cell division. Now these developments give rise to really enormous opportunities. Real-time diagnostics, so real-time imaging, better diagnostics, safer drugs, th novel therapeutics, personalized medicine, and targeted drug delivery. And I'll say a few words about this one here. What it really requires is using nanoparticles to deliver therapeutic agents, drugs, to cells, targeting particular molecules on the cell membrane. Or, in the case of this tube, because it's so narrow, it can actually penetrate the cell membrane and deliver material to the interior of the cell. But there's a big issue. Are these structures toxic? Now, we can study the toxicity, or indeed the disease state, by looking at real time, come on, move it, of DNA in, an, uh, in its natural environment. And this little movie, if it was working, would in fact show the jostling of the DNA uh, in real time. Okay? The ultimate challenge here is to look at the individual molecules and how they respond to drugs and indeed how they change behavior when disease onsets. So these are molecules associated with the eyesight. So what we can do in this case is to look at how these molecules respond to light and we can see them change their conformation. The remaining challenge now is to do the same with drugs so that we can produce safer, better, more efficient drugs. Now, this can be done in the lab. The question is, can we really ever translate that really to the, the clinic? That's one of the major challenges. Of course, memory and learning, the function of the brain, is probably the biggest medical challenge uh, confronting us. This is a system of something like 100 trillion electrical switches. And by looking inside each of these switches, we can begin to see the molecules that are responsible for processes such as memory and learning. We can go beyond that and use nanoscience to make artificial neural structures. So we can begin to imagine making uh, uh, prosthetics based on uh, nanotechnology techniques. But once again, there are big issues arise. While, whereas tissue repair is beneficial, human enhancement might actually raise some problems. Now, I've, I've stressed some of the advantages of nanoscience and what it can deliver, but there are also many problems that we really must uh, take uh, consideration of. There are ethical issues about, for example, who benefits from nanoscience and who governs its development. And then there are obstacles to innovation. Today, that means basically uh, investment. Now, in our view, we really, really require uh, collaboration between academia, government, private enterprise, each of these uh, sort of institutions that share this long-term aim for scientific research and advancement. So, thank you. <laughs>